Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we will be reviewing the Fanatec Wheel Emulator System from Sim Racing Machines, a slimmer and less expensive way to mount your custom steering wheel to a Fanatec force feedback wheelbase, with some nice features like being able to add your own buttons that work with the Fanatec 13-pin electronic connector. Time to put it through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. Now for our Closer Look segment on the Sim Racing Machines Fanatec Wheel Emulator. I've been waiting for someone to make one of these for a long time. Something that's compact and will allow us to attach our USB custom wheels to our Fanatec wheel bases. And now it's finally done. And of course, the guy to do it, as you might guess, would be Simon over at Sim Racing Machines. He's been doing Fanatec mods for a, as long as I can remember and shifters, USB conversions, all kinds of stuff. He's been doing this for a long time. He knows what he's doing. He does a great job at it. And yeah, like I said, this is nice, a thin, compact unit. You can still put your USB wheel on a Fanatec wheelbase by using their solutions, which are the, which I have right here, a podium hub, right? But it's kind of thick. It's about 46, 47 millimeters wide which is almost twice as, well, I'm going to say twice as much, close to twice as much as this. So this is about an inch less room that you need to mount your wheel, which can be a problem in some cockpits. And we also have, and of course, this is $200. <laughs> and we also have the Universal Hub. I don't have one of those here to show you right now, but that's $350. And that's a big, thick guy too. So this is a very compact unit with only the essentials of what we need to make our USB wheel work with the Fanatec wheelbase. And like I said, I've been waiting for somebody to make one of these for a long time, and I'm glad that it's, it's finally out here. It's a very nice, done unit. I mean, everything from Sim Racing Machines, if you guys have seen reviews of, of equipment that I've done from Simon over the years, you know he does a great job. We have some nice precision CNC aluminum pieces here and for our flange here that attach to the wheel itself. And on this flange, you can see we have a 70 millimeter pattern on the outside and a 50.8 on the inside. So whatever wheel you have should fit on here. Or you can just take a wheel side quick release, if you have a quick release system, and mount that here and just mount whatever wheel you want to to the other side because they have the wheel side quick release adapters and they just go together, obviously. So very cool. Now, you can see there is a circuit board in here, a little PCB and it's got SRM on it, and some other lettering, which is kind of small. I don't know if you guys can see that, but we also have some pins here. Now, we've got pins on the top here. See those two pins? We'll start with those guys on the top rows. Each one of those is for a shifter. So we can actually get a wheel bolted onto this and put shifters on our wheel and use these to shift through the Fanatec wheelbase. So we can, we can actually do that on the wheelbase, which is very cool. And we also have some other headers. We've got another three pin header over here. We've got a six pin header over here. Now all of those are for different functions of switches. <laughs> and you get this little instruction piece with your adapter, right? So I'm going to go over that a little bit. First, we'll talk about these three here. And they are, and you're not going to be able to see this because it's on paper, but there, he has a PDF of this on the website. If you want to go down, uh, download that and look at it. Of course, we have our two pins for our left shifter over here. Now the three pins, the first one is a common ground pin and we have a tune pin. So if you want to use the tuning menu on the, if you have a podium wheelbase, you can use that. And we have a joy push or a joystick push button over here. And we have that six pin header over here. And that is the top is up, left, down in that sequence right there. And then we have a common ground on the bottom one. And we have a hat push and a right. I'm guessing right would be like using a, a right push on a joystick. You can actually put your own buttons on this, on a, a wheel, and plug them into this emulator board and have them function just like if you had your Fanatec wheel attached to it. You didn't have to do that. I mean, really what we want to do is just tell the podium wheelbase that all is well. I have my USB wheel on here and just do what you do, right? And don't worry about which wheel I have attached. So that's what this does. But we have some extras too, and it's nice to see that. Now, on the other side, of course, we have the normal pin set up for a Fanatec wheel. And we have it here. We have it inside of this quick release here that's mounted to the podium hub. 
And of course we have it over here because I stole, I'm going to steal <laughs> the quick release for this F1 2020 wheel that I have. So I'm going to use that. Now there's also an adapter. I want to see it on the site. You don't have to buy this piece if you don't want to. There is an adapter that's like this, but it's hollow. It doesn't have anything sticking out of it. So it's just a hollow piece with, of course, the mounting holes that run around the, the edges of it. You can actually take this wheel apart if I wanted to and pull these, these little bolts out here and unplug the plug from the circuit board that's inside of here and pull the whole thing out. Then I could put that into, and that's essentially what he's done here on this aluminum piece. Then you put this here, you bolt it into the holes that are already threaded, tapped and ready to go. And then you run your cord through the bottom like that. And then you go over here to the, his actual board and plug it in. If you notice, there's an empty plug in here and one is filled. The empty plug is for the backwards compatibility with the older Fanatec quick release and hub systems like the BMW wheel is a good example of that. You can actually pull this off the BMW and plug it into this one because that doesn't have a, as large a plug in it as the new systems do. So you can still plug this in here and off you go. Just bolt it together. You're still able to use it. So very cool that he has backwards compatibility even with this stuff. Yeah, I'm really liking this. And again, now that we have this open, we can see the insides. Very nicely done anodized uh, machine aluminum here. And this is two pieces. You have the hub piece here, and then we have another flange piece here, and they are bolted together with three bolts right there. And of course, it looks like he used a little twisting motion to put this back together. We want to put this together and mount it. I want to make sure that I'm not pinching any of those cables in there. So it's just something to be mindful of when you're messing with this. All right. So it's pretty simple and easy to see what we're doing here, right? This is the hub or not hub, but quick release that I'm going to use for this assembly. And you'll notice it has six holes in it, but there's only four of these holes being used on the Fanatec wheels. I'll show you that here. We have two on the top here. We have two on the bottom and on the sides, instead of holes for screws or bolts, we have these little guides in here. They're sticking up they occupy the two side holes. So when we're putting this on, I guess I'll put it on this way. I look for that keyway, which way I want to put it. And then those little guides, just hold it there while you bolt it down. See them sticking up through there, over there. But I am going to use, and it's cool that they actually put into the kit four extra socket head caps. And these are M5s, and this is a four millimeter wrench size on the top of it. These are 15 millimeters long. They have washers on them. And when you get this out of the box, it actually had two of these with washers. Roll away on me. With washers already on it. Attached, just kind of holding this together, right? So about a took of those out. So we can put six of these bolts all the way around here into this part as we put our quick release on there like that. Right? So then I can, I can actually put six bolts in there instead of four, which you know, four is probably fine, but it's nice. I like the fact that they put an extra two in there in case you want to go ahead and secure all of them. You know, when it comes to the high torque podium bases, it's probably not a bad idea to put a couple in there if you have them, right? And we also get a total of eight of these. And these are flat head screws. And typically they are the kind of screws that we have in our wheels that we'll be using here. I'll take one of these wheels off and Show you what I'm talking about. So there's the flathead. So we have our beveled counter board, not counter board, but beveled holes in here. So the flatheads will sit flat in there. And they're not very long. So I would not be able to use these for this wheel because of my button box. But if you just have a wheel, then yeah, you won't have to worry about that, right? Because if it's just going to be a wheel bolting onto this hub here, it does, these don't need to be that long. And these are actually 13 millimeters long, right? So that's enough to hold a, a four or five millimeter thick steel or aluminum wheel plate onto here and still go in there and get plenty of threads for it. I'm going to use some longer ones, obviously, because I have button boxes I use on my USB wheels. Right. So everything comes in the kit. You're ready to go. There's really not a, a lot to it, which is a good thing. You know, simple is good, unless, of course, you want to put some buttons and shifters and things like that on the wheel you want to mount to this. Then you're going to have to make some crimps for the little female pieces that
crimp it to a wire and, and it'll slide onto here, right? Little connectors. So anything else we want to talk about? And I think that kind of covers it in the closer look. What we'll do next is when we come back is I'll go ahead and assemble this and see how it's going together. And yeah, we'll just take a look at that. Now it's time to put everything together. <laughs> One thing you want to pay attention to here is the orientation of the pins on your plug here. These small pins here, the, the two that are inside of the circle, see that? Those always point down to the bottom of the wheel. So I want this roundish part here to be on the top of the wheel. And the top of the wheel on Fanatec is always, in their quick releases, is this little keyed part. See that piece there? That's the key that slides into the male piece of the wheelbase on all Fanatec wheelbases. So it's real easy. We're just going to take this and slide it over the top. And again, making sure our orientation is, is correct. Now we can use these 15 millimeter long socket head cap bolts. These are four millimeter on the top here as far as your wrench is concerned. And I'll usually just put these in by taking your fingers and kind of wiggling around a little bit and try to get it through the hole and get it to go down to the other hole, which I'm not doing a very good job of right in a second. There it goes. It's just one of those feely things. You got to move it around a little bit. So get one started. And of course, we're just going to get these started. We're not going to try to put one in and screw it all the way down because then that's going to obviously pull all the rest of the holes off. Now remember the Fanatec wheels only use four of these M5 bolts here. But because we freed up two of these holes here, and we're not going to be using the guides that, that are on the Fanatec wheels that we saw before, if you watch that segment. I'm going to go ahead and put these other two extra ones that they put in the kit so that I'm going to have a total of six bolts holding this down because I am going to be using this on a podium wheelbase. And of course, they have a lot of torque. And I'm going to take my ball head. You can see this is kind of off angle, and that's why I have this ball head out so that I can get off angle and screw these in quickly without too much drama. So I'm just going to kind of run these all down first, not get them too tight, just running them down. Because if you get them too tight, it makes the other ones, make sure I got that loose enough. I want to make sure it makes the other ones stiffer when you try to tighten them up. So I'm just barely touching it together when I do this so I can get all of them down. I'm not torquing them down, so I'm just going to do them in a roundabout sequence here. Because when I torque things down, I always want to do a star crossing pattern. It's just something that it's a habit for me. But you see how easy that goes together, right? And we have all six of our bolts in there. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten them up a little bit with this wrench. Again, in my little star pattern, just rotate it around. Very easy to do. We'll get this one here. And we'll start on the other star pattern. And then I'll come back for the final Titan with a regular four mil wrench, right? So there it is. It's all set up. We, again, we're going to check the pins, make sure my pin orientation is correct based on the key that is in the quick release section. And yeah, a very nice compact unit here. So now all I have to do is get it attached to my wheel here. I'll be using my turn racing R20 wheel, and this will be attached to an Asher racing button plate carbon fiber unit there, the older style that he used to make, still my favorite. And this is a 70 millimeter pattern on this wheel, so I'll just be attaching it to the 70 millimeter pattern on the top here. Now, usually what I do if I have a nice flat piece here that I'm mounting my wheel to is just go ahead and obviously get my cord out of the way and just set it down. Now, I've got the screws already in there, but they're loose, so they'll easily push up. And I'll just kind of look sideways here as I'm pushing, or setting it down, I'm pushing it down. And you can see the screws came up when I did that. And it's just, I've done this so many times, it's just kind of a system that I use. And then I'll kind of jiggle the screw around a little bit till I can get it started. Then I'll go across the other screw and see if I can, because usually once you get two of these started, the rest of these are going to go. If the machining is done properly on everything, which it is on these units here. And then I'll take, this is three mil, not four mil. I picked up my four mil wrench there and just go ahead and run these down real quick. And uh, I always use a little star pattern here, rotating. Even though my final torque, I'll also use that pattern. 
but this is just an initial snug up. See, I've already got it together here. This is the easiest way to do this if you're assembling wheels. Instead of trying to hold it sideways and hold everything together because your button plate will come away from the rim and you're just, you know, it's just a fiddly thing there when you're doing it that way. So, go ahead and just snug these up a little. And I'll do a final tighten before I mount the wheel with a normal or regular 3 mil wrench like this one here. Because you can get more torque on this than you can on a ball end. The ball end tends to tear up these little sockets in here. So we've got our countersunk holes in here, of course. We now have flathead screws, and you can see it's all assembled. Yeah, pretty easy. Not much left to do here, except go over and attach it to the Podium DD1 wheelbase and give it a drive and see what we think. So now I have my wheel ready to attach to my DD1 wheelbase, and I have the wheelbase turned on and also have the driver. Let me pull that up here so you guys can see that opened up and you, as you can see there's no wheel attached to the wheelbase. It sees the wheelbase but not the wheel. So I'm going to slide this on just like you normally would put a Fanatec wheel on to a Fanatec wheelbase. Line up the key with the groove and then I'll pull my quick release and press it on. And when I press it on the little red piece should go out or the no wheel piece. And there it goes. It sees this emulator as a Club Sport Formula wheel. Now if I needed to I got my USB hanging here. If I needed to center the wheel, let's say it wasn't centered, then I would go into the driver here and go to my settings tab, right there, and just go down here and center the wheel and hit the wheel center calibration tab, and it will calibrate the wheel and it will be centered. So I don't need any buttons to do that, and I don't have any buttons. Remember, this is a strictly USB button plate here, and I don't have any anything wired to the emulator itself on the pins that, that's available to do that with. So, yeah, you have to do it in the driver. No big deal. Easy to do. And, of course, I need to hook up my USB over here because I want to be using that. And you'll also see on the little menu up here or a little display that's on the podium wheels. And first thing it tells me is attention enable torque. So it's, it's not talking about high torque or low torque. At this point, it just wants to enable torque. Now remember, I don't have any buttons on this wheel, so I can't do it through buttons. But there is a way to do this, and if you have a podium hub, then you know that if you read the directions there, it tells you if you turn your steering wheel 90 degrees with it attached, and this is because if you have a podium hub and you have a regular rim attached to it, obviously you don't have any buttons. So you take the wheel and you turn it 90 degrees, and I'm going to show you what happens when I do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that until the bar, this little bar is going to appear and then slowly fill. And you have to hold it there until it does. And there it is. So you wait. And then it goes to this. All right, so now we're at the caution torque keys inserted. But I'm still in low torque mode. And I want to go to high torque mode. So I do that one more time. And I think if I held it there, while well, if you saw just a second ago when it went to the low torque screen that we see now, the bar reappeared and started filling again. I think if I'd held it there, it would have went ahead and enabled high torque. But I just wanted to go through the steps here just to show you what's happening. We'll do this to the wheel again. Not quite 90 degrees, and it'll do it. And there it is. Starts filling up. And then we have high torque mode, and now we are ready to rumble. <laughs> so, yeah, now we're all attached. We're in high torque mode. Everything is good to go. So now it's time to just get in and do some driving. So here we are at Sebring in iRacing in the Ferrari 488 GT3. And this wheel feels good in my hands. This, obviously, this is my favorite, one of my favorite wheels, this R20 from Turn Racing and mounted to my Asher button plate. And now I'm actually able to use it on my Podium DD1 wheelbase, which is a little strange because I've never done that before. Not that I couldn't. I could have gone through the trouble of taking my Porsche wheel, my Fanatec Porsche wheel apart and pull the podium hub off of it and use that to bolt it directly to the button plate on this wheel and then use it that way. But to be honest, that was just a little bit more trouble than I wanted to go through to get my R20 onto a Fanatec podium wheelbase. Not only that, but the podium hub is almost twice as thick as this emulator from Sim Racing Machines. And that pushes the wheel back more, which gives more leverage to, to 
when you're driving the wheel itself. So, and that's another thing, it puts more pressure on the connection, which, you know, to be honest, is not the best connection in the world. These Fanatec hubs, the way they connect to any one of the wheelbases that Fanatec produces. It's a crapshoot on which, you, if you get a quick release, it has tight enough tolerances to make it good and tight for you, or not, and it's, and it's loose and it has some flex in it. But I never have that problem with my other wheel system I use because it has a quick release system on it that is solid as a rock, very stiff. And that's what I like. Of course, that's all subjective. When you're actually driving, are you really going to notice the difference? It depends on who you talk to. <laughs> I think I can notice the difference. But then again, I've been driving and testing a lot of different systems. So I'm a little more sensitive to change. Anyway, not much else to talk about here. I mean, we're just driving the car around with the R20. And, of course, the DD1 wheelbase is a great wheelbase for force feedback. I've never had a problem with the Podium Series as far as delivering adequate force feedback and great detail and plenty of power that's for sure so yeah just going through my paces here and doing some laps what we'll do now is just get to the final thoughts final thoughts on the fanatec wheel emulator from sim racing machines you know i've been waiting for someone to produce a hub that sim racers can attach to their fanatec wheel bases and use any custom wheel we want to without the bulk and expense of Fanatec's own offerings. The thickness of the SRM hub is about half of Fanatec's podium hub. This unit has a nice professional finish on the CNC machined aluminum bits. It has a 70 millimeter and 50.8 millimeter bolt pattern, so you won't have any issues mounting the wheel or quick release system of your choice. The circuit board that SRM has designed is compact, yet it has some features that I did not expect to find. There are pins on the PCB that will allow you to connect buttons directly to the PCB. Good for those who want to make their own button plate, or use SRM's own button plate to build a custom wheel. My unit came with a Fanatec 13 plug interface already mounted to the adapter, which plugs into the PCB. But you can get just the hub assembly and use your own parts taken from a Fanatec wheel. I used the quick release from my F1 2020 wheel to complete the assembly. All mounting hardware is included with the kit that you order. Once I had everything bolted together, it was easy to get the emulator up and running. I have to say that it was nice to use my turn racing R20 with my podium wheelbase. I was never motivated to attach it to the podium hub as it added more reach than when using my usual driving solution. Overall, I think Simon has done a great job with this emulator. It does exactly what you want it to without adding a bunch of things that you don't need. And it comes in at a reasonable price, I think. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.